In this video, I'm going to show you how to use data from data services. And we're going to start simple and make it more complicated as we go. So the easiest is using the uh, PDOK plugin. And here, if you open the PDOK plugin, you see you have aerial pictures here or topographic based maps, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, depends very much on what you need and what you know already, what you can use. For now, I use the open topo background map here. What I now did is I loaded a tiled map surface into my QGIS project. So if I zoom in, it gets more detailed. And if I look, for example, at this specific building, you see it's got a nice detailed image than if I zoom out. Now that works fine. This is a great background map. That is the easy way. Just use whatever you see. What you might want to know is what's behind all that. Here you see WMTS, which means a web, mapped, a web mapping tiled surface. This means that this is a very, it's a tiled surface, so it's high performance, but it's a web map. And web map is a ready-made map. If you scroll down a bit, you can see there's also web map services non-tiled. And there's uh, WFS, is Web Feature Service, and this means that you can get actual data and not only the nice image from the service. So let's start, for example, if we look at municipalities, and if I start looking for municipalities, I see here there's a WFS service for uh, municipalities, gemeenten in Dutch. Um, but I know this one is, is kind of a it only has the actual border so i'll go down this list i see i know that there's there's one by the dutch statistics office and that has some nice extras with it let's have a look okay what went wrong nothing went wrong this is just the wrong zoom level for this kind of detail so if i zoom out now for example uh, here you see that it's on the fly, it's loading the different objects. So here I've got Delft, and you see that it's got quite a lot of information, especially on population. That's what the statistics office adds to it. So this is interesting data, and we can use this, for example, to map uh, for how many people are in student age or in what specific things. So. This is a WFS. Now this is the easy way still. It is having a look at what's available here and just doing nothing else. Uh, you can also add other data sets that are not necessarily in this uh, plugin. For example, what we have here is we have uh, from the university here, we have the 3D uh, base registration for buildings. And there's a download page for that. Here you see the, uh, the URL, by the way. And there's a download page, you can download them, but you could also use them as a WMS or WFS data set. So let's have a look at this. And if I copy this link, especially the part before the question mark here, uh, that will get me to the actual data. Let's have a look, if I click this one, you get the capabilities document. Um, you can see a lot of information here, but it's all in uh, XML. So if you, uh, well, it's, it's, it's pretty well readable. But let's have a look. If I uh, just take this part out and I copy this URL here, what I could do now is that I could add my own service. Now I've got this service obviously already. Uh, so let's have a look at it. I open the uh, data source manager, which is the, uh, well, you can see it here. You could also uh, use layer the data source manager. That might be more appropriate because it gives you more structure in how the program works. And here you see all the different types of data that you can add. And here I have a WFS connection, web feature service connection. You can see that I've got a few connections already there. But if I would make a new one, this is the actual one, but let's make a new one. And let's just call that thing uh, 3D Buildings. I copy the URL in here. 
that I used from the uh, the service. Oh, let's have a look if this one just works straight out of the box. 3D buildings. I connect and I can see that there is one layer in here and it's called 3D um, bag, which is the base registration. Before I add this data set, I have to check it because if I add it, I get all the houses and all the buildings in this area and it includes The Hague and Rotterdam, so it's it's way too much. So let's zoom in a bit. Let's use the open topo map to uh, to see where we are. And for example, we'll move to the uh, part where uh, the architecture building is as well and a couple of other buildings. Okay, let's add it now. So I'm uh, going to the connection that I just made by clicking new and copying the thing. I see that there's an uh, there's one layer here which I can uh, click and I just add that data set and you can see the buildings coming in here. Now if I go back to the content of the TU Delft page here, uh, you see there's a lot of documentation on this uh, on the specific data set here on how it works and you see for example here ground on different uh, percentiles how high the ground is somewhere or how high the roof is. All those kind of information we have here are explained in QGIS. You'll see that um, if you, for example, identify an object uh, by just uh, clicking it, let's uh, take this small one here, you can see there's all the ground percentiles and the roof percentiles and everything here. So that is how the data as a surface can enter QGIS. Now during this course we'll be giving you uh, URLs for a specific data set, but you'll be able to find some uh, on your own as well of course. Now one place where you can look for data is the um, National uh, Register for Geoinformation at National Georegister. Here you can look for uh, specific subjects in specific locations. However, I should warn you that this is not a very fuzzy uh, search engine. Uh, so you have to be exact and it has to be exactly the same as the maker of the data gave it. So it is, it's kind of a hit and miss. But if you look at how many data sets are there, you see the numbers everywhere here. It's, it's a huge collection of data. For example, if we go to, uh, to this one, environmental data, you can see that there are municipalities that put their own data online. Uh, so there's local data. Uh, but there is also the, um, for example, uh, for uh, national organizations that put their data online. Um, let's have a look if we can see something. I just uh, you see that there is a WFS service here, uh, so we could do something similar like what we did with the uh, uh, TUDEL 3D info. Uh, we could uh, copy this uh, URL just by. Um, copy link location and then uh, try to use it in uh, in QGIS. So that is another way to uh, to get your data together. But finding data is always the hardest part. Uh, you will probably be spending a lot of time in there so please share with each other. If you found something useful share it. We have of course we have our, uh, our communication groups. Uh, make sure you share your data links so that you save time for the whole project.